Hello, good afternoon everyone. Um, welcome here today. Um, let me introduce myself. Uh, I'm Associate Professor Chin, um, Deputy Director of the Center for Language Studies. I'm also the convener of the Chinese Language Program. Uh, next to me uh, is my another colleague. Uh, her name is Miss Chen Yingru. Uh, she is um, also Assistant Director of the Center for Language Studies and the convener of German Language Program. All right. Um, now, uh, today we want to introduce um, um, or talk to you or introduce our program. Um, the Center for Language Studies uh, we established in 2001 with 2,800, uh, maybe more or less, um, uh, 2,800 students um, per semester. We offer 12 languages. As you can see, we offer Arabic language, Bahasa Indonesia, Chinese, French, German, Hindi, Japanese, Korean, Malay, Tamil, Thai, and Vietnamese. Here you can see all the uh, our colleagues wearing a yellow T-shirt. Uh, all of them are our um, teachers as well as the convener. Uh, let me introduce our Arabic uh, convener, Dr. Umar. Uh, Bahasa Indonesia, our convener Ibu Johanna. Uh, Chinese language, myself, that's, uh, my colleague is not here. Okay, it's okay. Uh, French, um, uh, Mr. Yannick. Yes, uh, and uh, German, Ingru, and who else here? No. Uh, Hindi, Hindi, Dr. Bach. All right. Uh, Japanese, Dr. Uh, Walker, Izumi Walker. And Korean's convener is uh, Miss uh, Chi So Won. And Malay, Aisha Siu, not here. Never mind, it's okay. Uh, Tamil, also Dr. Bach. <laughs> uh, Thai language, uh, Thai language is not here yet. Later you will know. Later she will appear. Uh, Vietnamese as uh, Ming, Mr. Ming, and also teacher Miss Lei is here. Okay, you can see all our teachers uh, are here, and also our admin supporting staff are here. Um, Center for Language Studies. Um, we attract many students per semester. As you can see, if you are taking FASS area studies, uh, that means your major, major students, you have to take language. Uh, for example, uh, Southeast Asian studies, if you are taking like um, uh, Malay studies, then you have to take Malay as a second language or as a foreign language. And um, like Japanese studies, Japanese studies, you have to take uh, Japanese language. Uh, it's a major requirement. So that means you have to you have to take the language as a requirement. And also European studies like French and German language. And we also attract uh, all other FASS students and students from other faculties. Students in the Southeast Asian Exchange Program, Students Exchange Program. Uh, this program is a special um, program that allows students to go overseas. So once you have um, decided to take this SEP, then you have to take a language module. Uh, maybe uh, Ingru, uh, you want to explain on this? Um, basically, this uh, language preparation program is a collaboration between COS and IRO, the International Relations Office at NUS. And at the moment, only French, German, and Korean are participating in this LPP program. That means students who are very keen to go on, go on exchange in um, Germany, Austria, and um, Switzerland, and go to France or Belgium for exchange, or go to South Korea for exchange, um, you can apply for this program. Um, but only if you are really interested, you are very keen, motivated, you are welcome to apply for it. If not, uh, maybe you can consider any channel to learn the languages. Okay, um, now uh, I'm sure many of you have received the um, Freshman Guide to 2013-2014, um, right? There is a session, Academic Matters, and then under there, under the session, you will find more information on LPP. 
So please go back and refer to the guide uh, for more information on submission or selection criteria. As far as I know, the selection uh, will be held in June, sometime in June. So I think the registration or application is already open. Do check the, uh, the materials you have or check the IRO's website. Okay, I think that's all. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you should know that learning a foreign language uh, is fun, right? Uh, it's very interesting. But the thing is, you have to put in a lot of effort because we are adult, we are not uh, children. So learning an entirely different language, you need to spend time on that, you have to put in effort. But we try to, our center, try to make it fun and make it attractive for all the students. As you can see that uh, our um, classroom is very interactive. Uh, for example, it's a very learner center, task-based, project-based, and process-oriented. And uh, we want to attract uh, more students and um, to learn the language, entirely new language, um, uh, require a lot of um, interactive way and a lot of activities. Uh, there are some more students coming in. We stop for a while because I think, um, I think you have to come over here. There's not enough uh, space. Here. Um, the group size for a language uh, course, or we call it a language class, is um, a small one. It's not 200 or 300 students. It would be like um, tutorial is about 15 to 18 students. So it's a small group. So for language class, uh, it might be 25 to 30 students. So um, on the other hand, we also have a lot of, um, as just now I introduced, a lot of excellent academically trained foreign language teachers. And um, in addition, we have um, so many different uh, countries from different countries, uh, the culture are different, the language are different. And also, um, we have over 100 full-time and part-time teaching staff. And we have produced numerous teaching award winners, uh, especially in recent years. For example, now you can see we have uh, a lot of uh, language teachers. They won the prizes for the past many years. So we have excellent teachers. And the center is firmly committed to excellence in teaching and seek to maintain and improve its high teaching standards by engaging in research and facilitating professional development in foreign language teaching. Um, you can see from the pictures, um, their faces are uh, very happy, right? They engage in all the activities, different activities. Uh, let me cite example, like for example, we have uh, language games, role play, acting, debate, discussion, presentation, and this one is in the class activities. We also have out of class activities such as interviewing native speakers, field trips, uh, maybe like uh, Bahasa Indonesia, they will go to Batam, you know, nearby, or Malaysia, they go to Malacca. Uh, they have field trips or to attend various ins institutions, like for example, radio, TV, schools, uh, to take part in festivals and special cultural events and cultural projects. Uh, so this one is the learning, uh, uh, some e-learning activities. We produce our podcast um, you know, materials for uh, teaching. Uh, that means you can have all this recording um, you learn it on the move. You can learn uh, in the bus, in the train, or even walking. Uh, and also we produce video podcasts. That means uh, we, 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 we are acting like a director. Uh, and also blogs and wikis. And Ingru will talk something about uh, blogs and wikis. Okay, um, basically, uh, our center is very strong in e-learning. Uh, we use different tools to supplement students' learning. 
As Dr. Chin just mentioned, we offer audio podcast, video podcast to supplement the students' learning outside the curriculum time. And we also plan to the blogs, wikis, and some other social medias, and, and also our, uh, some various tools into our classroom instruction. So um, basically, we try our very hard to pro provide our students with a very holistic way of learning, not only in the classroom, in the contact hours, but also outside the room, outside the classroom. Uh, we can show you some of the e-learning uh, website. This one is eDev. eDev is a German uh, language website. This one is eDev. And... Um, okay. we have, so this one is Bahasa Indonesia. Never mind. We go to Superman first. Cyber to porn. Too fast. I cannot. Okay. This one is a, a French uh, website. What else? It's different. Yes. This one is Bahasa Indonesia. Is happy e Chinese. So this is a Chinese, uh, <laughs> very interesting. Uh, this one is a Chinese um, elementary, intermediate, and advanced courses, and this is the podcast. And this one is the Korean language courseware. Okay, so you can see from here that. Um, we are helping the students to learn in different uh, various uh, different way that they can improve the foreign language. And um, we help students to acquire a very valuable economic and social resources in today's world of growing globalization in, in, and internationalization. So um, students in the center, not only learning the language, not only uh, they have competence to communicate, but also cultural awareness so they will understand other people's or other cultures that can help them in many ways so um, more effective communicative skills are very important but also good interpersonality and also cross-cultural relation um, we we try to um, help the students not only learning the communicative skills but also uh, learning how to learn the, the language. That means the strategy is also very important. Um, okay, what you can achieve? Um, the CLS Language um, Center, we will, uh, after, after taking um, one to two semesters, we'll offer elementary certificate for you and intermediate or, as well as uh, advanced level. Uh, with details, um, description of the language proficiency level, that means we'll show that uh, you are able to do um, certain things, like for example, you can communicate, you can read newspaper, or you can write emails in foreign language. So we will uh, um, return on the um, certificate. If, you're, if you are very, very good, uh, or your performance are very good, then you can get the CLS Special Book Prize. Uh, the book price, I think, is very attractive. Like, for example, we will provide $500 um, book price for like Chinese and other languages like German, Japanese, Korean, Malay, Thai, and Tamil. So it's very encouraging. Uh, we, we think that um, uh, the, uh, foreign languages are very, very important, uh, especially nowadays. For 
uh, not only yourself, like for example, uh, you know the first language is English, right? So the second language maybe is your mother tongue. So we encourage students to learn at least a foreign language, especially when you start learning, uh, it will be better to learn uh, from your semester one so that you can continue elementary for two semester, two semester for intermediate and another two semester for advanced level. Um, I think that's all for this part. Um, we want to um, uh, I mean stress on uh, that foreign language learning is uh, comprised of uh, several components including grammatical competence, communicative competence, language proficiency, as well as understanding other cultures, or sometimes even a change in attitudes towards our own or other cultures. So that one is very important for foreign language learning. And Miss um, Chen will continue uh, for this language immersion programs that are very important in the uh, language uh, learning process. Um, okay, so after listening to uh, some information on the center and the importance of the language learning, and now let me share with you some information on language immersion program. Um, uh, oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, here are the countries um, where the language immersions are held every year in May, June, around this time. So uh, some students, as far as I know, in the Japanese programs are very already very busy in preparing their departure. And our German students also, uh, they were going to leave uh, for Germany next week. They will be the first group, group. The second group will leave for Germany in beginning of June. So this is a very busy, stu uh, busy schedule uh, time for, for the students who are participating in language immersion program. Korean. Wow, okay. Today. In, Ju yeah. in July. So we have about um, 20 students. Um, they, I think they departed this morning to Taiwan. Uh, okay. Um, okay, so basically the language program is offered to students who completed the second uh, elementary module. Um, so usually the application is open uh, in, ju in January, February this time, and the trip will be, the program will be held in May, June every year. Um, uh, we work with our partner universities and institutions on the curriculum to make sure that our students receive uh, well-structured language classes overseas. And not only this, they will also participate uh, some cultural events, uh, cultural programs, and organize the outings and excursions. And a very important highlight in this language immersion is the homestay. So I'm going to show you some pictures. <laughs> okay, so uh, this is the uh, language classes in Korea. And I, I'm sure our Korean convener, Ms. Chi, worked very closely with the Korean partner universities on the curriculum. And um, this is a language class is conducted in Japan and in Germany. And uh, there are also some, uh, okay, as, as mentioned just now, the homestay. This is in Japan and in, in Europe and in Germany. Uh, this is in a family in a, a typical Sunday afternoon. They sit together, have a cup of coffee, and have some self-made cake. Um, other than that, uh, the student also participate in some cultural program. For example, this group of students, they were in Taipei, they learned Kung Fu in Taipei. This was a part of the Chinese language immersion program. Um, this is in Thai, they, they're having fun, play games, and maybe sing songs. And this is in Korea, they are learning cooking, Korean way of cooking in Korea. And this is in Malaysia, they learn the Batik painting. Um, this is in Batam. The student visit a, pu a newspaper publishing company to see how the, pub uh, how the newspaper is done over there. And this is in Japan. The, the students are practicing uh, drum, flower arrangements in Japan, and tea ceremonies in Japan as well. And there are also some outing and excursions. This is in Korea, in Thailand and in Europe, in Japan, in Indonesia, 
and in Germany. So um, I'm sure these colorful pictures have aroused your interest in reading our language modules, in participating in our enriching programs. Um, I heard many of our students saying, uh, after participating in this immersion program, they feel much more bonded with the country, with the language, even with the people over there. So I think these are all um, the plus point for the, for the future um, planning. It can be your academic uh, degree, pers uh, pursue your academic uh, degree, or also your professional um, career overseas. And um, good. Um, now I, I just want to say, um, um, learning a foreign language is. Uh, uh, it's an investment. It can be a long-term investment. It is fun, as Dr. Shin just mentioned, um, but it also requires um, your effort, persistence, and determination. So we want to in, uh, encourage and advise you to learn the foreign language as early as possible, um, ideally right in your first semester at NUS, because if you start early, you can pursue, uh, obtain a higher proficiency level uh, by the time of your graduation. So with a higher proficiency level, you can do many things. For example, you can go to a target country to pursue a higher degree. You can go over there to work and to have developed yourself professionally. So um, we have some students. Um, they just learned French one in the first module, in the first semester. In a subsequent semester, they learned German one, and then followed by Bahasa one. So basically, they are hopping in different language programs. It's fun. But what can you do with the proficiency level? So before you start with your career, your study at the NUS, we'd like to advise you to plan your modules, to plan your courses seriously. And especially take the learning a foreign language into your very serious consideration. Also plan your SEP, your internship seriously. So uh, in this sense, um, uh, I, I want to say, if you have already studied learning a foreign language, do continue. And if the language you are learning happen to be one we are offer, we offer, um, we like you to continue your learning journey with us. And we also want to invite you to sit for a placement test, just to make sure you are placed at appropriate level. Um, so here are the languages with the date. Um, you you don't have to take down. We will put up the information on our uh, website later. If the language of your choice or your interest is not here on the list, um, do free, feel free to talk to us. Our convener will do some arrangement for you. Um, I think that's all, right? <laughs> uh, I just want to add a few words because um, I see most of um, today's participants are Chinese. So that means for the language center, because we are offering uh, Chinese as a foreign language, so that means the Chinese is for those uh, non-Chinese like Malay, Indians, but we offer two different Chinese courses. One is Chinese for business and social sciences. So that means your mother tongue is Chinese. You still can choose uh, Chinese language. That one is more hands-on. So that means uh, to teach you how to how to write emails, write letters, how to apply jobs uh, in, in Chinese. And also we do some interviews uh, in Chinese. And we also um, do advertisement that is more useful uh, for your future careers. We also offer another um, Chinese course we call Chinese for Science and Technology. That means if you are interested in going to China or Taiwan or even Hong Kong to do um, some uh, courses related to um, uh, science and technology, you can take this course. And this one uh, is not that technical, but it's a way that to help you to improve your Chinese. All right. So we will offer two courses for those Chinese as your mother tongue. All right. Um, I think you might have um, questions related to the center, and my conveners are all here. You can ask questions, whatever of questions that you think that um, in your mind. Are there any questions related to foreign language uh, learning? Uh, 
prior registration is not necessary, but please bring along your metric card with you. It's, a, it's very important so that we make sure you are the person who participates in the language later. Yeah. Okay, but no prior registration for German language program is re required. But yeah, but never mind. Later, um, as a last slide, we are going to show you our um, uh, center's website. All the information will be put up there. Um, so you can just refer to the page uh, for more details later. So here is the website. I would like to add something about the SEPLPP uh, we just showed you. The program for German, French, and Korean are only for freshmen without any prior knowledge. So please take note of that. Okay. So under the LPP program, the student are used, if you are selected, you are going to read four consecutive modules of, a part of the, the, the language of your choice. So after four languages, you will be given a chance to go on SEP to the target country. This has happened, uh, happened in your first semester of your third year. So this is only for your information if you plan to go on this change. We will encourage you to, to start learning a foreign language at the beginning of the first semester. It will be better. But we discourage you to take two different foreign languages. Like for example, you take Korean and Bahasa Indonesia at the same time. Because it will take you a lot of effort to learn a new foreign language. So it's not encouraged. All right. Any other la uh, uh, questions related to foreign language learning? Yes. Yes. Um, okay, basically, there are two types of language immersions. The one is organized by IRO, that's only for the LPP students. But our center, and the pictures I show you, is our center, it's our own organization. So if you are, you, if you are not in the LPP program, you are welcome to, to come to our <laughs> center's language immersion. It's okay. But uh, it's, uh, when you register for the language immersion program, you are still in the, for example, take German module example, you are in the German 2 module, but you haven't completed that module yet. But the registration uh, has already opened to the students in that, in that module. So um, after completion of the module, you can go to emergent health in a target country. Yeah. Okay. By the way, uh, I think I just now, since you talk about the bidding point, I think uh, just for your information, many of our uh, level one module are, are very expensive. So I heard many students say, "Oh, sorry, I don't. I, I want to learn um, French one or Vietnamese one or Korean one, but I don't have enough bid points." So. Many of them they just submit the appeal through the course uh, online. Course, uh, are you familiar with what course? This term, the C O R S, it means uh, centralized uh, reg online registration. So you need to put your bid point there into your account to bid for the module. And uh, if the module is very popular, it will be very expensive. And if you don't have enough points, uh, you may not have the chance to read the module. Okay. And then, can I say one more thing? For the LPP that one. If you are selected to join the LPP, you will be pre-allocated. And the pre-allocation will cost you only one bit point. So many students, uh, if they are really keen to learn German, French, and Korean, they will go to this channel to get into the module. It, it's cheap. <laughs> OK, any other questions? Um, yes, I think um, I saw the. I read the freshman uh, guide. I think it says they look at your A-level result. Yeah. So um, anyway, um, if if you are keen, just apply. <laughs> the selection will be sometime in June. <laughs>